Heart disease remains the single biggest killer of Australians and according to the Victor Chang Cardiac Research Institute, 10 women die every day from a heart attack and nearly three times more women die of heart disease than breast cancer. Well, joining me live is Professor Jason Kovacic, Director of the Victor Chang Cardiac Research Institute and cardiologist at St Vincent's Hospital in Sydney. Nice to see you, Professor. How are you? Good to see you. Well, thank you. Unfortunately, these stats are very confronting and they've been around for quite some time. Why are they so high? They have been around for a long time and heart disease continues to be a big killer of women and of men. I think it's, it's, it's known that this is a problem, but I think the, the depth of this problem really isn't appreciated. It's a bit like the tip of the iceberg thing with that huge burden of cardiovascular disease in our society. And we do see high rates still of obesity, diabetes, high blood pressure. These things continue to drive this epidemic of heart disease in our community. And you're one of the world leaders in some fairly new research into SCAD and FMD. Can you tell our audience a bit about those conditions? Absolutely. So there are some heart diseases that affect women far more often than they affect men. So SCAD is a disease, spontaneous coronary artery dissection, which is effectively a tearing of the, of the arteries of the heart that affects women almost 10 times more than it affects men. We're still starting to understand what causes it, but there are genetic causes and some exposures like extreme heavy lifting, bending, straining, but it can lead women to have these tearing of the arteries. It's still relatively uncommon, but we are appreciating it's actually the most common cause of heart attack in women under the age of about 50. So a big problem, we're starting to get more insights in FMD, a disease fibromuscular dysplasia, again, a vascular disease that affects women about 10 times more than men, can lead to stroke, heart attack and other problems. So big diseases and we're starting to make some inroads on them. So what can people do to look out for the symptoms and, and hope to prevent these from occurring? So particularly in women, I think we need to acknowledge that they do suffer from heart attack. The symptoms, classic symptoms of heart attack, you're crushing heavy chest pain, very obvious and there's no excuses for not calling 911 and getting an ambulance or triple zero and calling an ambulance. But women don't always get those classic symptoms of heart attack. It can be pain in the belly, it can be shortness of breath, it can be just fatigue, sometimes pain in the jaw, pain in the arms. We have to be really vigilant for all of these different symptoms of heart attack. And doctors, I think, need to also do a better job, and I think we are improving at recognising these symptoms of heart attack in women and doing more to make sure the proper diagnosis is made. Yeah, really good point. And you certainly do a lot of work overseas as well, where you've got a lot of um, you know clinics and so forth and, and hospitals that you work there, and again, world leading in so much of your research. What are some of the differences between women's symptoms and men's symptoms? Right, absolutely. So men do tend to get crushing heavy chest pain when they're having a heart attack. Women, it's a bit less common, that still can happen, but shortness of breath, as we said, pain down the arms, pain through to the back, pain in the belly, just general fatigue. The symptoms can be quite variable, so it is important to be aware of that. Uh, and also, I think some of the risk factors in women are slightly different. Women are somewhat protected against heart attack until menopause. But after menopause, they tend to catch up. And then that's when heart disease becomes such a big problem in women. So the, the demographics, the age, the symptoms can be different, but we really need to do more to recognise those symptoms and those risk factors in women as well as in men. All right, and you have your annual lunch in Sydney this week and it's certainly raising vital funds and you have been doing this for quite some time. Tell us about the importance of events like this. Yeah, thank you. The Victor Chang Cardiac Research Institute has this annual Women's Heart Health Day lunch. We have it every year in Sydney, obviously stopped through COVID. It's a big event on our calendar, lots of women, and we're talking about women's heart disease much as we are now raising awareness and I'm happy to say we also had one recently in Perth in WA so it's now become a national event really doing a lot to raise awareness and trying to get that message out there that women do suffer from heart disease as well it's not just an old men's disease but we all need to be doing more to protect our heart health yes and we have the wonderful Laura Jays who will be your MC on Thursday she's absolutely. a very busy woman does a lot of work and very talented absolutely indeed. and, very and passionate you, you about it you yourself did a wonderful job oh, recently on that you, as yeah. well Thanks, no, I've Jody. been to a few of them and it's um it's you know and listening to some of the people's lived experiences and stories it's really quite emotional as well, but just to see how, you know, some people have had such success and the prevention as well, how, how much we can really prevent these th things occurring. And I love what you do with the, you know, your, the blood pressure machine there and, you know, all of those tests and everything. So um, 
Yeah, there's, there's no excuse for us, is there? I mean, obviously, you know, times are tough, cost of living, you know, perhaps bulk bill, doctors, I don't know, Absolutely. like, you know, whatever we can to, to look after our health. Absolutely. We need to really shift the dial. I think we're good with some health things, you know, mammogram, pap smears, even men getting prostate checks. We're still not as good as those things with heart health checking you know, and checking that blood pressure, cholesterol, glucose, thinking about healthy diet, not smoking. All of those You'll things are just as important, if not more important than mammogram, pap smear, etc. But we're still not as good as at heart health as we are these other things. So raising that awareness and making sure we all get our heart health checked is so important for our society. And not too long ago, you came on and told us about a specific test that you could get, and it's a genetic one. Tell us about that one. Right. So in terms of cholesterol, there's a standard cholesterol panel where we check total cholesterol, the bad cholesterol or LDL, good cholesterol, HDL and triglycerides. There's another bad cholesterol, if you like, called lipoprotein A. It's been harder to measure. There's been no therapies for it, but that's all changing rapidly. I just came back from the European Society of Cardiology meeting in Amsterdam. Immense interest and immense focus on lipoprotein A. So there's more and more testing for lipoprotein A going on, and there are specific therapies to lower lipoprotein A just around the corner. Lots of news and lots of trials coming out of that. So this is something to watch out for, a second form of bad cholesterol, which is really important, and it's an independent causal factor for heart attack. So, And is that one, one that is more sort of like inherited and perhaps lifestyle and diet won't fix that? Absolutely, Janie. So lipoprotein A is very different to the other bad cholesterol. The other bad cholesterol, LDL cholesterol, is very affected by being overweight, lack of exercise, poor diet and so on. Lipoprotein A is very genetically determined and in fact lifestyle, diet and so on don't do much to impact it. Really the levels you get are very much dictated by your genetics. So it's been harder to measure, harder for us to get our hands around but with these specific therapies just around the corner there's now intense interest in lowering LPA and making sure we can actually get that under control because it's increasingly recognised as an independent factor for causing heart attack. Well, again, those numbers are very confronting and so we really need to be proactive with our own health. We'll be watching your research carefully as always because it's wonderful and uh, you do such a great job, you and the team. And uh, hopefully we'll see you with that, that research very soon and good luck with the lunch on Thursday. Great. Thanks so much, Janie. Thanks, Thanks for your support.